Hi, this is uh, Jay Horowitz with another edition of Maisie Mitchell of my podcast. My guest is 1986 Met Ed Hearn. Friend from was 40 years. And Ed, if we put it bluntly, right now you're probably in the fight for your life. Would that, would that be a fair assessment? You're waiting for your fourth kidney transplant, hopefully, and uh, probably on the verge of starting dialysis. Uh, so tell me how you feel, first of all. Well, I, I, I'm doing okay. I, I uh, had a bad week last week, ended up in the hospital with some, some issues um, related to the surgery to place my peritoneal catheter, uh, which will I will start dialysis on here in the next 10 days to two weeks. Um, you know, for where I'm at, I'm not too bad. I got outside yesterday and break lease for about an hour. So, hey. Eddie, could you explain to the people out there, I, I guess the rules for kidney transplants have changed and you don't have to be the exact match. It is a registry. You know, I, I mean, if people out there listen, you, you gave me a line the other day, the last time we spoke, and, and uh, if people don't know, Eddie was traded for David Cohen in April of 1987. And you said to some me or somebody else, well, we gave the people in New York David Cohen Ninety cent back from you guys. How far me kidney? So that. Was it. <laughs> but, but, but tell me, what's the procedure now for getting? You know, if somebody listens to this, wants to help. Well, the the old system of the UNOS of uh, cadaveric list, where you sign the back of your driver's license, is still in still in effect, and it's it's, you know, we need to do that if we can. Uh, the problem with that is it takes an average of three to four years to get a kidney off that list. So the next step that has evolved uh, 20 years ago in my last transplant was a living non-related donor, a friend of mine. He flew up to Mayo Clinic and gave me one of his kidneys, and uh, he was back home within a week, back to work. Uh, we were a pretty good match, and we've last, you know, my kidney has lasted 20 years, which is a good run. But today, they've really upped the game here in the last four or five years. Uh, this National Kidney Registry was put in has been put in place the last few years. And um, what happens here is you don't have to be a match, as you mentioned. And what that means is how that works is if you were giving me a kidney, Jay, you say, hey, Eddie, I want to give you a kidney. Ah, uh, sorry, Jay, we don't match. Okay. And I say, Lee, Emily, and one to to give a kidney to uh, Daryl Strawberry, and they didn't match. But vice versa, we did match. So they, they do what's called paired exchanges. So you would give a kidney to uh, Daryl, and Emily would give the kidney to me. So, and then additionally, one step further, which is just fantastic stuff, um, what, what I am hoping for, is something called a low effluent match through the National Kidney Registry database. So once I get somebody, a donor, who is, who, who is willing and then does give a kidney, it probably, it won't go to me, probably. 95% chance it won't go to me. It would go to somebody on that registry that they're a really good match for. And therefore, the chance of that kidney lasting for that person is really good. Then I get what's called a voucher. And when I'm ready and needing that kidney, which is any time now, <laughs> um, then I take that voucher or they send it in. But then they put my data into the database and search the database. It takes about 2.8 to 3 months, average time right now, to get this low effluent match, which means much better chance of longevity of the transplant. And most importantly, in my case, um, potential to lower the immunosuppression that, that, you know, is a big challenge because of all the side effects. And in my case, uh, squamous cell skin cancers grow like weeds on me. And so uh, if you can lower the immunosuppression, then I have a better chance of not having as many of those cancers. And you, the last couple of weeks, since you stopped playing in 87 after the trade, hasn't been easy, but, you know, are you persevered? Wrote an autobiography, become a, a motivational speaker, started your you know, the, the bottom of, bottom of Nights Foundation. How do you how do you keep going? Did you, did you find a fortitude to keep going through all these years through the cancer scares and the sleep apnea stuff? And how did you keep going to try to reach out 
and help people still? You know, when it first happened, the creating shoulder injury here in Kansas City was tough. But less than a year and a half later, bone dialysis and me, my first transplant with all these other issues that were diagnosed. It's been a tough run. But what I figured out, what happened to me is um, I almost quit, Jay. And uh, the day in the basement, when I almost quit, I put the gun down and I made a plan. I've always been proactive. And I, I don't think, you know, you just can't float down the river of life and, and get to where you're at. You know, get to made the major leagues as a player. You, you have to be proactive. So I sat there in my basement after contemplating quitting, and I made a plan. And uh, I began to work that plan, and it, and it was fabulous. It just began to really draw me out of the, the self-pity and stuff that I was feeling, mostly as a result of a, as a side effect of the medications on the first transplant. So once I got going with this plan, uh, and the main, the number one thing that helped me was I had heard a great motivational speaker just before my transplant named Zig Ziglar. He says, he, he said, I, I'll never forget, you can change where you're at in life by what you put into your mind. And I bought into that. And I became uh, a reader, a tape listener, anything positive from, from my faith, Christian faith, to Anthony Robbins and Earl Nightingale and Zig Ziglar constantly filling my head with good stuff but then once i that began to help me feel better and help to get me inspired again about life i began to have that opportunity to speak and that really became the thing that has kept me going um you know i talk to corporate america associations and one of the biggest thing i tell them is Another thing Zig said, you can have everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. And that's true. I've learned that when you help other people. So as I began to have the opportunity to speak back in 1994, and I started getting emails about, wow, man, I didn't want to go to that, that meeting. Oh, they're always boring. But I'm so glad we, I did because hearing you was just what I needed. Or even things like, uh, one person sent me a, a, a message, email, or letter. That day I was in the hospital for a month. I took my Bible and your book. It was your book that got me through that month. Things like that. That's what I call the juice of life, man. Just, I just, I have been able to feed off the opportunity to help other people. It's just been remarkable. And right now, my biggest challenge is as COVID hit the it began to, to, to smother my opportunity to be out there because I'm on immunosuppressive medication, so I'm very susceptible. I'm one of those people that everybody talks about. And the last couple of years, three years or so, I'm, I'm not able to get out and make a difference like I was for the last 20, 25 years all over the country. And now I've been stuck. And that's that's been a challenge to keep going. But... Uh, you know, my hope is that this isn't the end of the road for Ed Ernst. My hope is that someone will step up the plate and share with me their extra kidney, and I can get back out doing the very thing that you asked about, what keeps you going, and it's being able to touch people's lives in a positive way. This sounds weird probably, Jay. Not at all. From, from an 86 Mets guy? I mean... <laughs> us, us crazy wild guys but you know you know we all evolve and, and particularly in my case i was never a bad guy you know me i was a milk drinker one of the few uh one but, of the few. You know what? yeah one of the few right eddie me me and you jay yeah we drank milk on the plane ride right back from houston we <laughs> spiked with something but we drank it hey before no, so i got we, to before you forget it's got to make it good to hear you know some of your former teammates and friends like Ron Darling and, and David Cohn, you know, speak about you. And like Ron, Ron was quoted, said, we don't get to 108 wins in 86 without Ed. And that has to make you feel pretty good, right, Eddie? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's just no doubt. You know, it's, it's surprising as ball players. Um, over the years, I realized that, that we, we don't get back together like we, like I thought we would. It's not like there's this great bond that, that transcends 
the years because guys don't, you know, I, I, for example, say Doug Sisk and Jesse Rusco, they were, they were like tied at the hip. I mean, they're like Bob, the Bobsy twins, but you know, I came to realize that, well, they don't get, they hardly talk. And so when those guys step up the plate for me in this situation, absolutely, you know, it feels good. I mean, I, I so appreciate that. Yeah, Eddie, what was your relationship with Gary Carter? You know, you didn't, because Gary liked to play every day. I remember him sitting in the training room with East Pack, and his knees were packed with ice. He still would come out of the lineup, but he wanted to play every day, every day, every day. You didn't want to come out. How hard was it for you to, you know, I mean, I know you want to get, I remember one stretch in August of that year. I remember Gary broke a couple of fingers with his hand and he caught for most of the months of August, I think, if I remember correctly, and, you know, kept us afloat. But you remember your bye play with Gary through the year when we were there? You know, uh, we have one child and his name, his name is Cody Carter. Hearn. Very nice. So what does that tell you? So yeah. it means that I've said. I really looked up to Gary, not only as a, you know, somebody uh, you know, that I could, I could learn from as a catcher, a Hall of Fame catcher, but more so as a, as a man, human being. Uh, you know, like all of us, Gary wasn't perfect. And there were some things about Gary, you know, that sometimes could get under your skin. And that's been documented by other players. And sometimes people focus on that stuff. For me, I had more times with him, you know, because of our position, like position. So we, we were together a little more. And and I just felt that uh, I was honored to be able to be with him that year. I mean, uh, and, and then we lose him, man. Uh, you know, our son, Cody, got cancer in 2011. And I'm driving home from some speaking engagement. Um, Cody's in chemo. And I get the word that Gary's died. Yeah. Oh February 12th. It's tough. You know, life doesn't last forever for any of us. So, you know, we have to live it the best we can. Um, and um, and that's what I try to do. And that's what keeps me afloat is the juice of helping other people. And you, uh, a lot of Mets fans don't realize you probably hold the record, might never be equal. You're the only player in MLB history to have a ring from single A, double A, triple A, and a major league in, in a major league, 86. Um, what do you remember about that year? What do you do with all those rings, Eddie? Ah, uh, when I go fishing, man, they keep my my stink bait right on the bottom, Jay. You know, out there in the in the, the big depths of the canals or wherever, you know, the lakes. Like, they're my sinkers. But we have them in one so you have them in one place or uh you know, I can't tell you that, Jr. I'd have to take you out, man. Yeah, but that, that was a pretty, that was, that was a pretty good year. That was a great run. I came from the Phillies organization because I had had some major injuries. The Phillies were using me as a DH first baseman. And I said, look, fellas, let's, let's uh, you know, I got other things to do in life. If somebody's not going to let me catch, uh, I'm going to move on because I, I'm not a, I won't hit 40 home runs. So they gave me a release and Steve Shriver gave me the opportunity. He said, I'll let you catch half time we'll see what happens and man it just happened to be good timing lynchburg 83 jackson 84 norfolk tidewater 85 and then the world series 86 but here's the kicker jay the mess traded me away they ain't one since that's true that's true <laughs> the jinx of ed carl i heard and he, he mentioned 83 you called doc in 83 at lynchburg and he struck out 300 batters yeah. Did you know Doc was going to be Doc when you, you caught him? Um, you know, we had 300 strikeouts for Lynchburg in 83. Did you think he would be that pitcher? I mean, Doc was phenomenal back in 83. And he moved, you know, Davey brought him up, boom, boom, right away, AAA, and then and into big leagues. He was phenomenal. He was beyond anything I had ever seen. And yet being so young, uh, he was remarkable. Uh, he stood out above the crowd by a, a ton and so uh, and most importantly i'd like to tell you jay and you know this dwight gooden you know had some struggles in life here and i just read some stuff on the internet about you know that bum he threw his career away and all this stuff you know what dwight gooden is a, is a great man he is a great guy he got he got caught up 
and a bad deal, addiction. And it's a medical issue. And I've seen it take people down, or, you know, in, in my life of my six years. And But Doc was a great pitcher, tremendous stuff. But he was a good guy. But he just got thrust into this big spotlight in New York City at such a young age as a superstar. Yeah, it's tough. And it's tough. But it's nice to see Doc around. You know, yeah, Dow's you know Dow's a minister now. Dow's doing good and you know and, and everything. I know if it wasn't for your illness, you'd be in fantasy camp. You're a big, big part of that. I must, you know, I know you wish you'd be down in Port St. Lucie with the guys right now, huh? Yeah, no doubt, man. I, 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 I'm part of the Facebook group for Mets Fantasy Camp, and about ten days ago, I had to, I had to, get out of the group, because it was just. It just making me ache. People were starting to talk about, oh, you know, 10 days, seven days to camp. You, you know, all the coaches and all the guys. And I'm telling you, it's a really special program at Mets Fantasy Camp. It's amazing what Doug Dickey has done. And uh, I, I just, you know, I thought it would be kind of fun to go to when I went four, five, six years ago. And I've been back every year until the last couple with COVID. And I do miss it terribly. Uh, and and just, just today, just today, I joined back in. Good. Cool. So I could kind of just, I was like, all right, I got to see the pictures. I got to hear the stories. And I just went through this, all the statistics today. So, uh, you know, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of. Keeps you kind of feeling like you're part of the organization. And I know you told me the other day, you're going to go to the University of Minnesota shortly. Um, and then that, that's another step on the line of hopefully getting the kidney for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, you have to have a transplant center that's willing to do a transplant and you have to be evaluated and approved for that. So I'm going through that process right now. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, you know, that's that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is, uh, you know, having a donor that will make a donate a kidney to probably the database, most likely. And I get a voucher and then I can get hopefully wait out a few months and get a, this low effort match. Uh, so yeah, Minnesota is, is uh, University of Minnesota's tremendous, tremendous transplant center. Tremendous. And if, say if Bob Smith out there wanted to do to, to donate a kidney to Ed Hearn, what would the, fir the first step he would have to do? You know, it's it's easy. Uh, there's there's a link that I can give you. It's www.nkr.org forward slash fqh33 three and there you can just fill out some basic information and that gets the ball rolling from there nkr would contact you if you were potentially considering donating and you would do a medical history online if if that looked good to the doctors they would then send you to uh to a, a local uh quest or lab lab core for blood and urine if that pr proved out to be good then you would be uh, brought into an area, say, if you're in, in Port St. Lucie, Florida, you would, you would probably go to the Cleveland Clinic of Miami or some, some big transplant center nearby and have a full, full day evaluation. I mean, it, I mean I, I've told a couple of people, friends of mine, like, hey, you ought to do this just to get the, the medical exam because you're not going to get this kind of exam anywhere because <laughs> I mean really do it and it's free it doesn't cost you a dime and it's done by the top medical transplant centers and uh you know from there if, if everything went good then you would be approved and then have the opportunity to schedule a three-week window where where you could make a donation you know once they matched you up and you don't have to leave home hardly that's, you know, that, that's it's great. Fabulous. 20 years they've made such progress. Oh, you know what? Um, before I like, what, what's your fondest memory of 86? Is it one game or a moment? I know the Mookie home run for me, it's it's the Houston game and this game six and in, in 86. Is it is something that stands out in your mind looking back? It was 14, really, it's uh, uh 36 years ago. Oh, amazing, isn't it? Wow. You know, I, I have many multiple memories, of course. The, uh, the Houston playoff game six was amazing. The flight home, as you mentioned earlier, getting yes. hit by, by stakes and stuff, but it's thrown across the plane. Um, 
the World Series, Game 6, the come behind, all the blah, 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 all the stuff. But individually, I would say my first major league game in L.A., and then secondly, maybe the best was Father's Day at Shea, where I hit my first major league home run. The grounds crew retrieved the ball, and my parents were there, and I was able to give that ball to my dad. That's very nice. Uh, you know, really special time, really special. I also, yeah. big time was was the ticker tape parade, Jay. Right. Uh, and the, particularly for me, the drive from the Shea Stadium to Lower Manhattan, all it was all barricaded off. People on top of their cars, you remember, they're going, let's go, Mets. Let's go, Mets. People up in the rafters, construction workers. Yeah, I just saw the other day, the film the other day. Yeah. Oh, it just gives me chills. Just, you know, with this big police escort. Uh, it was just phenomenal. And this is November, the uh, uh, season of giving and helping people. It, we're just hoping that uh, there's somebody out there to help you get back to full health so you can get back and do what you want to do and go back to speaking and making a difference that you did before outside. So thank you for your time and hopefully. Hopefully we'll reach somebody who wants to do something to help you, Eddie. You know, a lot of people back in New York and Flushing and Queens praying for you, hoping for you. So keep battling, so I can say. Thank you, sir. I know it. I feel it. And, you know, um, one of the things that I've learned is that we all need each other. Right. No question. We can't do it alone in life. And in this situation here, I, you know, I get a lot of people sending me messages say. We're praying for you and, uh, you know, get well soon and hang in there. Well, uh, yeah, I can't do this on my own. It's going to take uh, another human being to step up and uh, it's going to happen. Because I, I, I believe, know it will happen. I believe, yeah. God, I believe God has a plan to keep using me. Well, uh, as he we'll, be, we'll be praying for everybody back at City Field in Queens. We pray for you, Eddie. And, you know, have a good Thanksgiving and uh, we'll speak soon. Well, we have a lot to be thankful for, Jay, and, yeah. and I, I appreciate the Mets organization and what you guys have done it, to support me in this quest to get my health back. Well, we're 100% behind you, Eddie. Thank you, Keep brother. Well. Take care of yourself. Thanks, Eddie.